Danielle, do you have any experience with pump chambers, setbacks, and what do you guys do? Yeah, I mean, so we obviously we try to meet setbacks as wells, um, especially new properties when the well driller and myself have an opportunity to meet and we can kind of figure out where it's going to go. Some properties, obviously, you're never you're not going to meet those setbacks or else they're not going to have a system uh, when it comes to just pump chamber. You know, when you think about the basements that have sewage ejectors built into the floor, and you've got floor drains that aren't connected to the septic, at least if that pump chamber is outside in soil and something fails, it's got the soil to leach into. Whereas if it overflows in the basement and you're washing the floor, squeegeeing the floor, it's probably going into that weeper and where's that weeper coming out of? So we always try to encourage people to have their sewage ejectors outside of the building if, if you can, right? Um, but if how technical you wanna get, when you look at the code, when you're looking at 8221, it says that any tank that collects sanitary sewage. So to me, if somebody wanted to be very, uh, you know, picky on what they would decipher, it's, it's all an opinion on the code because it's not specifically stated as a pump chamber, but it does, you know, it's a tank that collects sewage and sends it somewhere else. So it would be ideal to meet setbacks, but there would be a lot of properties that it would not even work out to design and install the system if it had to meet setbacks. Great points, Danielle. Jeez, I love these sessions. I, I learn new stuff every time I'm I'm part of them. So thanks for that. Um, 